Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Activate. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Oh no, holy spirit, activate. Okay. Holy spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit, but you're the only bills that I need in that sick. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So holy spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So holy spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you cannot... Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit, but you're the only bills that I need and that's it. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, you better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh, no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Holy Spirit. Activate. Hey, hey. They say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit. But you're the only bills that I need and that's it. They always in my business, but they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible, but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way? So Holy Spirit, you better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit, you better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sean Davy Way Show. Um, I love y'all. Oh my goodness, I missed you guys. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? Um, I can see y'all already coming here. Talk Stop talking about Jaguar. Y'all are so weird. <laughs> like this is not about her. Like y'all are so weird. For people that swear we enabling and we ain't real friends and we fake um, and all of that. Okay, can we be those things, please? Yes. Um, let me be a fake ass bitch. Because what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Um, what are you going to do about it? Ooh, you think about it? Or you just. Okay, so um, here flip. Um, let me be a thick ass bitch. Let me be a fab. Ooh, um, let me be that. Okay, um, this is not about her. Um, it literally is not. Um, I don't care who churn she threatening. I'm too busy out here defending mine. Um, to be worried about somebody else churn being talked about. Okay, words <laughs> that are they are the words. <laughs> Ain't nobody standing over top of nobody a uh, turn big with no weapon. Um, and that ain't okay. This person did not say this outside their house, you know, um, or anything like that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, yeah, there's people out here talking about my case. So yeah, I'm too busy defending my case to worry about somebody else that jumped in something that didn't have anything to do with them to worry about their case. My girl, I don't care. Um, Jaguar ain't threatening no churn over here. Um, as far as I'm concerned, no child deserves to be threatened. I would never back that. Um, even if a, a, a Jaguar would have said it during a conversation with myself, I would have edited that out because don't no child need to be threatened. That's gross. They ain't got to do me though. I'm not threatening people churn. 
That's not what I'm doing. And I'm not supporting it because remember, she didn't say it over here. She, she, did she say it over here? I'm like, did she, she said that on my channel? I said, oh my word. I said, where the hell was I? Oh, she didn't say it on my channel. Oh, she wouldn't say it on her IG or something like that. Okay, because I'm not her handle, I promise. Y'all know how oh, oh, and Ellie was holding Sukiyana wig and that other girl wig, girl. And, and walking them through the video like dogs. Yeah, I'm not chopping. Okay, I'm not holding Jaguar by the back of them braids. Um, I promise. She does what she wants to do. She's a grown woman. Okay, I didn't say that about anybody's case. And she didn't say that over here. Okay, so shut the... Again, this is not about her. So I'm here, flip. Go over there and tell that grown woman... What she said, where she said that she was wrong for saying it. Okay? She didn't say that over here. I would never allow nothing like that. Mm -mm. Children are innocent. They don't have nothing to do. They ain't on YouTube. They're not on here. They dumbass mamas might be, but they not. They dumbass daddies might be, but they not. So, um, yeah, I don't put turn and stuff. Y'all is weird. So, don't come in here with thee. Don't come in here with thee because you will get the boots. I don't care about no goddamn subscriber account number. I don't care. Okay? I really don't. Leave. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Leave my show. Okay? Yeah, this is not about Jaguar. Like, this ain't about her. So, um, back to the subject at hand. Uh, let's get to Marcus Houston, how he run around here touching on people. Mm-hmm. Oh. Let's get into Marcus Houston. Now, I'm going to need you guys to hit the like, okay? You have been really disobedient lately. I don't know why, because I love y'all. And I do this for y'all. I really don't get that. I really don't get that. But y'all been trying it. So let, let me go, you know, we have to stop with the threats. We have to stop with the threats, okay? We, we now have to do what we said. We carry all it. On uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna play it because you know I've been threatening y'all for a while. I'm gonna stop threatening y'all. That's what that word. I'm gonna stop threatening y'all and just start doing. You were just singing a song. She's like just... reading. That's all right. Trying, um... No way upon upon that gives me no 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 hit that light shall prosper that light. now now it won't be he will do what, said it was. what he said he would do well he will stand by your side. side hit the light he will come, come through with a peace so don't be afraid of your friend to be here. You threw the what? The day. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, uh -oh. hey! Uh -oh. Wait, I, I just heard I Michael come out in. You a Jackson Ooh. for real? No, I'm not going to get Michael Jackson closer because y'all will be hitting like a knock on these dudes. Get the lock. Now we shouldn't have to go through all this and I'm trying to give people justice. Now I'm going to start, I'm tired of threatening y'all. I'm going to start going to get my girl. Okay? Got to fight every night to prove my love. Y'all got me drinking angry. And that's not good because they get called your pipe. Eating angry and drinking angry. So, um, yes. Nah. So let me get back into my show. So, nah. Marcus, okay? Don't leave your chair around me. True pedal for real. Yay. So, uh, Marcus out of Houston. Shout out to the neighborhood talk. Uh, shut up, predator. So, uh, Marcus, uh, 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 teach your kids how to sing and other stuff. You know, after teach your churn, other stuff. Y'all, Houston, Roger, go home himself. Okay, Batman. Okay, 
vigilante. He was a real vigilante. Just vis vigilante in the situation when people turn. Okay? Then decided to go over here to TV1. Now, Marcus, I'm going to tell your bald head ass this. Okay? Because that hairline is not real. Let's start there. Let's start there. That it is fake hair on your head. You can't go like this. You can't do this. You can't do that. So your hair's fake. Let's let's start there. Okay, your hair is not real. Okay. Now it's been a while since I had an argue with a man with weed. All right. Now, now you're, you're sitting over there with a horse's fade. With a, with a mane fade. Okay. And you're trying to act like you're still young like me. And you're not. Okay. Because when you was my age, you was doing stuff you weren't supposed to be doing. That's what that worked. That's what that worked. Now, Raz B says, now look at me, Marcus. Now, Raz B says, since he was 13, you and his gross cousin, Christo. Okay. The burlester. Hey. So you and the burlester. Been touching on my friend, my brother, from another mother. Okay. Since he was third of the team. Okay, Taz, look at here, Dyke. You was too Taz. No, y'all. Because he, he, he want to go in there and talk about everything, but he want to go in here and talk about this damn runaway and don't want to admit the fact that she's a goddamn runaway. Okay. Now, Marcus, I'm sick of your shit. Yeah, I'm going to cuss a little bit today. Okay, Marcus, I'm sick of your shit. The jig is up. Admit this damn stuff already. I done proved it. Now, I'm not about to keep doing this with you. You're going to think because you went over there to TV once. So, I don't want to interview you no way. Marcus, I don't want to interview you no way. You did that to do what? No, y'all. And now shout out to TV One. Okay, I ain't mad at y'all. A little bit, little piece. A little piece of annoyed with y'all. Okay, because I'm like, why is this P word over here anyway? Okay, we don't support this. Okay? So um, I, now I was a little bit, I was a little piece of angry. <laughs> little, little, little broke off of upset. You know, break me off a piece of that. I'm upset. It's a little piece. Not the whole Kit Kat bar, but like at least two of the little things I was some eat. Little piece. Little piece of. Little piece of that. Little piece of the middle finger. It's all right. You know, little piece of the, y'all. You know, so I mean, but whatever. So. Now, Marcus, you don't went over here and sat down like I care. I don't care. Because everywhere you go, you make me right. So, like, it's okay. All right. I don't care. I don't care like you here right now. With that weave on top of your head. Because you're sitting over here like this is you. It's not. It's not. And I can prove it. I can prove you are very so much receding. That's why you always said you was rocking a bald head. Okay? Now the burlester, because his ass is bald too. And he went from bald to having a fade. No, uh-uh. Y'all about to keep coming up. This is God given. This is the Lord up here. Okay? Y'all got your hope. All right, now, I ain't got no problem with Jehovah. Okay? Shout out to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay? But just like us Christians, okay, we got a couple bad seeds. Y'all got a couple of them, too. Okay? Now, now, the Christian faith, if it's always getting called, ah, oh, and they're supposed to be a pastor, and they supposed to be this, and they supposed to be that. Okay? Y'all always call us out, so we going to call y'all ass out, too. Okay? Now, look at here, Jehovah. All right? Y'all got a couple bad seeds. Okay? Now, y'all y'all love calling out us Christians. Y'all love it. Okay? So, we're going to call y'all out. Now, now look, Jehovah. This is, look, now. Oh, um, just look. Now, that's not what that word. Okay? Now, Marcus used to keep sitting up. He committed all these sins. And he blaming it on Jehovah. Okay? He said Jehovah said that he should be with a 17-year-old girl. Now, I don't know how y'all Lord work, 
but but my <laughs> my baby Jesus, six pounds, seven ounces would never do that. My baby Jesus don't even know what I mean. My baby Jesus wouldn't do that because my baby Jesus loves people. My baby Jesus gave people for real. Okay. So um yeah, my six pounds, seven ounces born in a manger. He would never. Okay. So let's get into that. Now, uh, Marcus, and then set up his line of us again. Okay, and I'm tired of this. I'm sick of his shit. Okay? Now, he's talking about this damn girl. And we're we going to get into it because I'm messy. Okay? Now, look at here, TV1. Let me put my banner up. Fair use. Ain't nobody trying to steal y'all stuff. Anybody? Y'all can have this prattle. Y'all can have this prattle. Okay? Uh, y'all can have this in a group. We don't care. So, uh, hold on, Mark. Shut up. So, uh, now let's get into this clip. Now, I say 40 year old. Hold on, let me put this up. Hold on, hold on. So, y'all can sing. I ain't making up words. A uh, 41 year old Marquez Houston addresses backlash after admitting he met his wife at only 17 and married her at 19. He said, Our situation is a little different. How is that, Predator? Mm mm. All you P-words is alike. All you groomers is alike. You tried it. Then smashed some ass beast since he was 13. Up in that bang, 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 ski, ski, ski to that poor little boy. So uh, let's get into Marquez and then we're going to bust him right on out. Why not? How we how we met, you know, through mutual friends and everything like that. You know, I, when I met my wife, she was 17. So, you know, we had no really conversation and no really connection until, you know, she was of age and, you know, it's people don't understand it. Um, uh, we 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 understand, we get it. Just don't mind what we call you when we understand. Don't get mad at us because we ain't saying, Oh my gosh, you guys are in love. We're just all like, No, he's a predator because it's like she was a teenager. Like, she should just be off limits, you know? Give her a chance to live at least. Like, what did she, 25, 30? You know, something like that. I mean, if you really feel that way about her, let her grow. Let her go through life. Let her make mistakes. Why does all of them need to be with your 40-year-old ass? I'm like, yeah, why do they need to be with you? No, let her go experience what a 19-year-old should be experiencing, which is life like a 19, 20-year-old, 25-year-old, you know, something like that. Not no 40, like, ill. Like, that's what people don't understand. Yeah, gross. We get it. It's just nasty. We get it. It's gross. Because if you wouldn't mind the daughter that you just had with her being 17, sleeping with a 40 year old, I mean, because it'd be y'all that like, and that is what gets me. You would never let your daughter do this, but it's okay that you did. You want to excuse it. There's no excuse. You, you don't get to excuse it. You're going to be put in the line of people that anybody else will put them in, which is a predator. Like, I mean, you, you, you groomed her. It's gross. It's weird. It's off-putting. And it shouldn't have happened. Whenever you get through, it's giving monkey see, monkey do. Meaning Chris Stokes did this to you at a young age. So you did the same thing with your wife. You Younger people are way more gullible than older ones. Older women know better. Okay? So when you're treating an older woman a certain way, mm -mm. even I would say 25 up. They just like, yeah, um, no, you're, you're not gonna treat me that way. Ma Miana, Maya, Mia, um, she rarely ever goes anywhere, ever does anything. And when it she does do anything, it's pretty much oriented around Marcus. So it's a very sad life, is what it gives. I tell you to jump, you say how high. I say shut up, and before I get to the in the word, you should already be quiet. You know, type of situation. Control. You want to control her. An older woman, it's hard to do that with. So him trying to control a 25-year-old and up, that it's not going to fly. Like, they're, mm -mm, they're they, they not stupid. They done experienced a lot in life, you know, within that moment, that being 25 and up, you know? So you have to go younger. It's easier to manipulate younger people. If you put something in front of a young person that they've never seen or had before, it's going to be hard for them to turn away. It's going to be hard for them not to kind of bind to your will. No different than with Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston. 
allegedly, when Marcus Houston was growing up, these same things was happening. He was being groomed by Chris Stokes. So Chris Stokes put something in front of him that he couldn't say no to, which was fame, fortune, you know, and all of those other good things. I mean, he was literally a kid um, when he first came around Chris Stokes. So everything that he's done, he's very so much gotten it honest. He has, but it doesn't mean that you get to go around continuously lying um, about such situations. You, you don't get to do that. You didn't get to lie your way out of bad decisions. Like I've made some bad decisions in my life, which I'm sure Marcus could admit to, but it's life ruining. So it's not easy to take accountability for what he did allegedly to Raz B because he was doing it out of request of Chris Stokes. Even Chris Stokes being placed in the room when certain things went on and happened. So it was more so of him being groomed too. Like it's it's very unfortunate, but it's hard to feel sorry for a person that was a victim and became an abuser. So it's hard to have sympathy for said person, but I'm sure, you know, life was going really fast, you know, when they were coming up. So again, you put all of these things in front of me and as quickly as you hand them to me, it's as quickly as you can take them away. They have a power over you. And again, very young. Marcus Houston was, when he came around, no different than B2K, you know, and all of them, they were very young. So the conditioning that was done to them, it hits different because it's from childhood up, you know, so it's hard for them to say something when they were so used to being silent. So they were getting everything they wanted while certain things were happening. And then when, you know, they, literally the fame, the fortune, no, all of it. You know, they had it all. B2K was huge. IMX, immature, huge. You know, um, they're, they're big groups. So, and their star power was massive, um, especially in the Black communities. Um, their star power was massive. You know, girls would literally throw themselves at these men. So, um, yeah. And you, somebody comes and tells you that they're going to take that away. Like, all of that is going to be gone if I don't... So it's easier, again, to do it to younger people. Older people know better, you know, so they're going to be like, uh, no, I'm not. But when you were a kid, it's just like, I mean, you don't know what to do. And then none of the components that they needed to protect them was present. So their parents weren't there. You know, when they would be on the road and stuff like that, they would pretty much just be with Chris Stokes and his management team, TUG management or entertainment at the time. They were called, uh, Chris Stokes' company was called TUG. Um, at the time. And when they were going to her, you know, and all of that stuff, they didn't have the that protection, you know, so they weren't being protected. So when they went back to their families, that's why they would never stay long. They only got to stay a day or two. And sometimes not even that. Sometimes not even that. Um, Chris will promise them that they will be able to go home for holidays. And Chris Stokes, their manager, he will promise them that they were going to be able to go home and see their families and all of that, and not like maybe once or twice, um, they can remember going home to their families. Other than that, he would keep them. Um, and I believe that Chris kept them because you have to keep your enemies close. So I can't let y'all just be at home like that because if so, it's gonna be easier for people around you to break the guard. The walls that I have placed around you to keep this secret, if I take you home and let you be there, the people that love you and when they embrace you, because it's different. When you've been going away from your family for a year or so type of situation, and the only people you are, you are embracing are strangers, if those strangers are hurting you then or doing things to you that you do not understand, when you get back around your family, that is how you're, you're going to isolate them. You're Because touch is different to you. Intimacy is different to you because of what has transpired. So with them coming back around, it would be easy for the families to break those guards down because they are going to embrace them. How loving family embraces one another, not somebody that is hurting you. So it's easy for them to drop those walls and say what happened. So they don't, he don't want that. He has to keep them away from the people that love them because when he tries to, you know, around them long enough, especially family time, like holidays, so you have a lot of the family around. So you're going to get a lot of love. And these people are really proud of you. 
You know, your family's probably you're in a group. Your group is huge. You know, you in movies, you know, and all of this stuff. It's just like, of course, everyone's going to come just because you're there, you know, type of situation. And the more love you get, the it's in abundance, then it makes it easier for you to just break down and cry. And your family's like, what is wrong with you? Like, are you okay? You know, type of situation. And most kids would just say yes, you know, because they know that they need to, the guard, the walls. Um, and I believe that that's why Chris kept an, uh, basically a handler um, with them, like Taz um, and other people. So that it was like a constant reminder, you know, that you need to be quiet. You don't say a word, you know, um, type of situation. If the handler's not there, then it's easy for the family to get what they need and not even trying because when somebody's going through something else to say you never know what a person's going through the family it's um it's unknown to them you know they have no idea what is happening um when they are not around they have no idea and so it's not like they're looking for you to tell them that but sometimes when you're around people that you care for it will make you open up you know and make you open up enough to say like look this is happening to me dot 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 so he needed to protect himself from that. And he did. And that's why he never sent them home. So with Marcus Houston losing his mother, you know, at a younger age and whatnot, I think that, you know, he attached himself to Chris because Chris was the most familiar thing to him, even more familiar to him than his own father. And like father, like son, Marcus picked up those traits from Chris and it went from there. So him grooming Mia, it's not surprising. It's not. But Marcus is not a victim. He was a victim. He stopped being a victim when he started abusing. You don't get to be both. You don't get to be both. That's why it's pick a team because there's a fine line, you know, between love and hate, you know, so like you, it's easy to cross it. And he crossed it. He definitely did. And he should be held accountable for that. Whereas B has had a horrible, tormented life due, due to the things that Marcus has done and Chris, you know, no different than um, shout out to Quindon Tarver, rest in peace. Same thing with him. Like his life was hell after what happened to him because there was it's no justice. So it's, it's hard to have peace when these people that did these horrible things to you are living great lives. It's hard, you know, to just let that happen. You know, so it was the same thing with Raz. People say like, oh, well, Raz B was only doing that because he was broke and he wanted money. Well, he shouldn't have been broke. None of the members of B2K should have been broke. Those men have made millions of dollars, grossed millions of dollars. And Chris stole from them. That is why TUG is no more. That is why it is no more. How he did those artists. He was worse than Bad Boy. Chris Stokes was worse than Diddy. Literally. Like, way worse um than did he like those boys should have been millionaires there's no reason that each member of b2k you got served gross over what 50 million alone these are the four star the stars of the movie that's why there wasn't a second one because of how they was done so bad with the first one like the movie friday uh rest in peace to john witherspoon he was paid ten thousand dollars i believe to, uh, no, no. Was it a thousand? Was it between a thousand and ten thousand? I think it was ten thousand. Um, to do the movie Friday, and that movie grossed millions of dollars. So you best believe when next Friday came around, John was like, "Look, I ain't even coming outside for less than a hundred thousand. <laughs> I'm not even coming outside, you know, for less than like a hundred racks, you know, or something like that. Like y'all got me effed up. Like as good as that movie did, because once a person is paid, they're paid. So he paid them bare minimum." to do the movie You Got Served, and it grossed millions of dollars. And they didn't see none of that money. So Chris needs to stop acting like he hooked them up and all that. No, you did not. You effed those boys out of, because that was his biggest project, You Got Served. No other project Chris Stokes ever did even came close to You Got Served. And the reason why is because of those men, B2K, even IMX, like they are the reason that movie was where it was, not you. Like people could have cared less. And I would say Steve Harvey helped because he was a big part of the movie. So he definitely helped 
you know, with that as well. But those actors made that movie what it was, not Chris Stokes. He did not. He had no, because sometimes you don't know what you, you have, you know? So he had no idea that this movie was going to be as big as it was. He just thought that, you know, I'm gonna put y'all up, put a movie out for y'all. Well, now we can grow some income doing that while y'all go back on tour with the soundtrack, you know, you know, so he's thinking business, you know, but he had no idea that you got served was going to be as big as it was. So yeah, and none of those men got there just do. None of them, none of them. And they knew that if they go against Chris, then there's consequences um, for that. So that's why Marcus Houston stayed because like father, like son, Marcus is trash and you need to go to jail. You need to go to jail. But um, let's listen to the rest of this little clip. And I got a lot of, of course, I got a lot of backlash for marrying someone that was 19. And, you know, when we did finally start to talk, I was like, this woman is like me. And she was just like, when I would talk to her, she just, for one, we had a spiritual connection. And I feel like that's the most important thing. We both love God. We both love Jehovah. And that was key. And being able to start being around her and talking to her and talking to like, we got it. We, we, we connected to music and, you know, uh, her spirit, her kindness, her heart reminds me a lot of my mom. And just, you know, we connected on so many different levels. Marcus says that Mia reminded him a lot of his mom. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. I will, I'm not, I'm telling y'all, I'll go get Michael Cousin. Then y'all start leaving. Oh, well. Um, so Marcus says that Mia reminded him a lot of his mother. Now, his mother passed away. Um, years back. And when she passed away, Marcus confided a lot in Chris Stokes. Um, he absolutely did. And again, Marcus is closer to Chris Stokes than he is his own father. Like he, he no one is, Marcus is closer to no one than Chris Stokes, even still to this day, right now, um, as we live and breathe. They are still extremely close. So again, he is still wrapped up with the person that did all of this to him. So he is literally just like Chris Stokes, manipulative, he gaslights, all of that. Like throwing his poor deceased mother in this situation to try to make it seem like it would exonerate. No, she was 17 years old, off limits. Now, the main reason I feel, well, well let's talk a little bit more about this before we, because you know, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to dive in. So sit back. This is going to be... A lot of information, a lot of it is repeated, but a lot of it is new to a lot of you. So, um, but we will dive right on in. But Marcus is going to be on TV one and do this interview where um, we see this, as you see, TV one uncensored. Um, this is their IG page and they have Mark Houston joining their show. And I believe it drops this Sunday, um, this episode about Marcus speaking on his wife. Um, and cause I know he doesn't talk about what he needed to talk about, which is Raz being Quentin Tarver. He needs to speak on those men. He needs to, because again, and we're going to get into that too, just again, cause I'm getting annoyed. So he's going to go on here and speak fair use. I'm going to, um, put this banner up and we're going to listen to Marcus Houston going over to TV one. TV one um, to interview. I'll call naked. I want to do a song called Sex with You. That just grew me up. So we did a video and I was like, okay, people are really going to be shocked with this one. It was one of my most successful moments in my career as a solo artist. I got a lot of backlash for marrying someone that was 19. She told me, don't nobody care about you. Hey, you ain't famous no more. I didn't even know who you were. And I just remember like being like, Love you. <laughs> she saw me for who I was. I really don't like this guy. I really don't like Marcus Houston. Like, I really do not like you. You are so annoying. You absolutely are. Talking about some she didn't know who you are anymore. You ain't famous no more. Agreed. Hey, no argument there. But still at the same time, she's a kid. I mean, I'm 34 and look at her as a kid. 
Like, you don't look at it that way? What do you mean? Yeah. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, she can't. Like, that's how I would look at it. I wouldn't take a sister at all. I was like, oh, that's cute. You got a little crush. Oh, okay. But it's like, my kid is 14, about to be 15. Like, what does that say if I would date one of her friends, like her 16-year-old friends or 17-year-old? Like, gross. Like, so we're going to have to worry about your daughter? Like, when she turns 16 and 17, like, her bringing friends home, is that going to be a problem? Is that going to be a problem? Because they don't know who you are, you're not famous anymore? Gross. I'm just like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I don't blame Mia. I, I really don't. I don't blame Mia, the wife. Because I feel like a lot of people give her flack. But people have to remember, this was a 15-year-old runaway, right? So this girl ran away at 15. Uh, damn near never to be seen again until all of a sudden she pops up with Marcus Houston. If Marcus really wants to know the reason, okay, let, let me let me pull this up. Let me pull, hold on. Let me pull up this. I'll just pull up the video I did. Yeah, let me pull that up. Let me pull up the video that we did on Marcus. Hold on. Shut up, Sean. Shut up, Sean. Okay. So I don't watch the whole video. Oh, I'll be. Okay. So fair you, Sean Davy Way. <laughs> fair you, Sean Davy Way. So, um, Sean Davy Way, you better not strike me, ho. Um, okay. Let, let's pull up. Let's get to where is it? Because so y'all go check this video out. Okay. Now, mind you, Mia was a missing girl. Okay. When she ran away, literally, she went and found her mom, which her biological mom name is Paula. And she went to go find her, and she did. She went and found her mom, and she had been with her mom ever since. Now, at that point in time, allegedly, according to Marcus Houston, two years later, she was um, 17 at a Jehovah's Witness at his church, and a mutual friend, which is Chrissy Stokes, Chris Stokes' daughter, okay? Chrissy Stokes, which she is right here. Hold on, you know, I come up with this thing. Where is she? I think I put her in the video, didn't I, y'all? Didn't I, y'all? Let me go look at the end. Maybe she's at the end. Yes, she's at the end. So, yeah, Chrissy Stokes, that's who that is. That me is right here, and then Chrissy's in the driver's seat, which is Chris Stokes' daughter. So, she's the one who allegedly introduced Marcus to Mia, okay? Mia was 17, according to Marcus Houston, when they met, which is a total lie, okay? Marcus didn't know that his uh, wife-to-be mm -hmm, was putting up videos and whatnot on Instagram um, before she deleted them all. So if we go, is it on this video? Right here. So right here, she has braces. Mia got braces when she was 15. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. When Mia met Chrissy, which was in when, when she was 17, which Chrissy is still significantly older than, <laughs> than Mia, which is like, what, which I cannot follow anyway, but whatever. So at this point in time, she's 15. Okay. Um, because she has braces. Mia did not have her braces on long. She did not. Okay. So at this point, Marcus, you are a liar. You knew her before she was 17. You absolutely did, okay? Because in this picture, let me pull this picture back up. Where is it? Right. I don't know where it is. Sorry, y'all. Uh, right here. In this picture with Miana's mom, this is right after she ran away. She didn't have, hold on, let me. I don't know why this is. Why this um stupid. But pay attention to the fact that Yeah, turn that off. Sorry. Off. Okay. If you look, 
She does not have braces, okay? So she's about 15 in this picture right here. See, no braces? This is right after she ran away. Literally, you see the yellow bow in her head, all of that, okay? She's 14 and a half, 15 in this picture, okay? Because technically Mia ran away because she was reported a runaway. And let me, let me put that receipt up on the screen. Okay. Now, she was reported missing in 2016, but she could have been missing before that. We have no idea because she was with her mother this whole time. So she could have run away at 14. She could have run away at 13. Like we... The only reason why we said that she's 15 is because according to the date of her running away, the, of the report, she would have been 15 years old. Mm -hmm. But that's when it was reported. So she ran away a year before that or a year or two before that. Because again, whoever had her was getting benefits for having Mia, right? Her mother lost custody of her. That's Paula in the photo with her. She lost custody. So she couldn't get Mia. So that's why Mia had to live with her off the books. She couldn't report that she had Mia if she wanted to. That's why still to this day, she's listed as a runaway. Because she was with her mom, the one who lost parental rights that whole time. Marcus, say I'm lying. I'm not. That's her right there. That's Mia. That's her daughter. That's her mom. Oh, and Marcus, let's not act like the mom wasn't down with it. Because why don't y'all show this picture? Let me, y'all know why I keep a receipt. Is this it? Boom. Why don't y'all ever show this picture? And it's deleted if you go on IG. Why don't y'all ever show this one? Oh, hold on, I'm gonna just save it. Cause you get a better visual of it on here. Hold on. Cause if you hit visit, Okay, boom. Okay, it's me. Oh, okay, it's still up. Oh, hold on. It's still up. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm not following this page. Oh, okay. But look, it's no secret that the mom was down with it. Look at this. I don't think I've ever showed y'all this. But look at this. Same woman. That's Paula. It's her mother. Same woman in the picture with her. Why don't y'all show, Marcus, why don't y'all elaborate that her mom was at the wedding? Why don't y'all do that? Why is it a secret that Paula was there? Girl, she was there. So if Paula was there, then Paula knew that you were with her daughter that whole time. Girl. Girl. So she basically lived with the Stokes family, Mia. Mia basically lived with them. Her and Chrissy are like this. Chris Stokes' daughter. Like, girl, why, why is it such a secret that she was at the wedding? She was there. Can I elaborate? Marcus, why you never want to talk about this? That they basically sold you, her to Chris, basically bought her for you. Because she was living with Chris Stokes' family. And going back and forth with her mom. That's how she got braces and all of that. Chris Stokes. Because, again, Marcus, no one has to lie on you. You're no one to lie on. I promise. You're no one to lie on. Hold on my phone. It's like you're no one to lie on. Like, no one has to lie on you. Let me pull this up. I think we did not have Receive. enough information. But now we have a lot more. So, let's... So, again... You swear you see because again, this is showing, Chrissy. That's Chrissy Stokes. That's Chris Stokes. That's his daughter, and that's Mia. At this point in time, Mia was around 18 years old. She's about 18, just turning 18. Marcus said Chrissy introduced them. Because she was basically living with them back and forth. That's why Marcus came forward and stated about her being on the IMBD or DB, how you say that? Credits of Chris Stokes movies, because she was. Well, he says, oh, anybody can make those up. True, because 
It's a couple people on YouTube. <laughs> True. But that was a made up. You put her on those credits, just like he did with um three of Marcus Houston's ex-girlfriends. They're credited on IMBD and or DB, and it's not a problem. You credited them. And you didn't take any of those credits back. Why are you taking Nia's back, Chris? Why why? Why are you and Marcus saying it was made up? Y'all not saying any of the other girlfriends Marcus dated was made up. I find that weird. The wardrobe stylist and or the you know, all, all of that, all of them were credited on Chris Stokes projects. But it's a problem for Mia. Cause she's on them. She absolutely is. And she was definitely underage. And that's why Marcus says, you know, underage people are not allowed. Because she wasn't supposed to be there. She wasn't. And then again, when Marcus and Mia got married, she had no braces. She had no braces, none of that. When her mom first got her, look, up close picture. Up close picture. She had no braces. So in this photograph, she's between the ages of 13, I would say, and 15. But I honestly, it feels like it's given like 13 or 14 years old. So I believe Mia ran away prior and the adoptive family did not report it until it, they was basically about to get caught. So they reported her missing because she was with her mom this whole time. So that's why no one ever stated that they found her because she was with somebody she wasn't supposed to be with. So she went back and forth. Chris Stokes is the reason she got braces, not her mom. I mean, maybe her mom took her. But I mean, because she can't be on the paperwork because you lost all parental rights to her. You're not supposed to be near her. Yeah, she wasn't. Her mom, she wasn't supposed to be near her. She lost her parental rights, not custody. She lost rights, <laughs> like the rights to her child. She sure did. What situation did you put this girl into where you lost rights to her? Anybody think of that? I'm like, oh, because you lost your parental rights. Why? Because she had other kids after this. She's even pregnant in this photo. Mia's close to her brother. You want to know how I know? The one she's pregnant with in this photo? Because Mia was a kid in this photo. You want to know how I know she's close to her brother? As of recently, a picture of Marcus here at three years, an image of Dicky. In this video, which I can pull up, it's on her YouTube, Mia Houston's YouTube. She in this video, she's getting ready to go um hang out with her brother. I think he's like graduating or something. So yeah, she's really close to the in that picture who her mom was pregnant with, her little brother. She's close to him. Mm -hmm. She's very so much close to him. She is. So, and because she's been there since he was born. Marcus, how do I know that Mia's been there since he was born? Although Mia wasn't supposed to be near her mother because her mother lost parental rights. Oh. Because in this photo, again, the same picture that we looked at earlier. If you look over here with her mom with the maroon shawl or sweater, or whatever you call it, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. And Mia was a runaway. She's hugging a runaway. She's hugging a missing girl in this photograph. Her mother. Because she had her ever since. Who did she sell her to? Chris, basically. I'm not going to say literal sell, but I mean. Chris. And Chris groomed her for you. He got her teeth fixed. He dialed her up. All, all of that. He completely transformed her for you. I don't know if it's like a gift. If Mia was like a gift to you, because again, you said that you didn't meet her until she was 17. This whole story right here on IG is about Marcus Houston. Mia was a teenager at this time. She was 15. Now this for a fact, Mia is 15 in this video. 15. Literally 15 years old. 
at this moment in time, she looks a little different because her bone structure and her face has changed because of set braces. And if you keep paying attention in this video with her hanging out at home by herself, let's cut to where she's out to lunch with Marcus Houston. Notice how these two people are the same person, mm -hmm. meaning that she's still the same age. So she's 16 at this lunch with Marcus Houston, although he swears he did not know her before the age of 17. Uh, Mia, from the picture that I gather from that video, that was your birthday. So you turned 16 at brunch. You, you were 16. That's why you were out to lunch with Marcus because you was Girl, it was your birthday. Girl, you were turning 16. Girl, stop. Like, I'm like, why? what's with the lies? Like, cut it out. Like, Marcus, you're caught. You said you didn't know the girl until she was 17. Oh, my God. You're weird. Because she got the braces off basically when she turned 17. Because when she was 18 and they did their uh, pictures for um, them getting engaged, which was on, hold on, right here, because this was the day they got engaged. She's not smiling right here, but she does not have braces anymore. Because this is the picture that was on People Magazine and she was showing the ring and whatnot and her hair blowing in the wind and all that. And she's smiling. She doesn't have braces. They got engaged when she was 18 and they got married when she was 19. He said he didn't know her before the age of 17. You're lying. You're a liar. You definitely knew her. And I can prove it. I just did. I mean, I can prove it again and again and again after that. It don't matter if he was 16, 15, 14, 13. None of that matters. You said before the age of 17. So anything under 17, you're lying. So if any photo or anything like that video can be pulled up when she was under the age of 17 before you swore you met her because she wasn't sitting at this brunch 19 or 17 years old. She, she was not. She turned 16 at the brunch. At this brunch right here, she turned eight. Who my fault? This ain't the brunch. <laughs> this is the brunch. Get to the brunch, Joel. Oh, and this is an important keynote, too, that the mother was following Chris Stokes. She still is. She's still following him on social media to this day. To this day. Cut to where she's out to lunch with Marcus Houston. Notice how these two people are the same person? Mm -hmm. Meaning that she's still the same age. So she's 16 at this lunch with Marcus Houston, although he swears he did not know her before the age of 17. And that changed into he didn't know her until the age of 18. Either way it goes, Marcus Houston, you are a liar. Gone, Shana. Yeah, you're a liar. You're, you're, you're lying. You, you knew her prior. Yeah. And, and the braces are, thank God for those. Because if not for the braces, I, it would have been kind of harder to prove how, because she's so young looking. You know, so it still would have been harder to prove. But the braces are a dead giveaway. Because she didn't need them long. She didn't, she had a little, you know, in the front of her mouth, I get why she wanted them. I, I get it. Um, if you notice a picture from her when she was smaller, when she was young. Um, so I get that. So she wouldn't have the braces long, most like a year, if that, like a year, year and a half um, tops. And then they would be taken off. So were her getting those braces, I mean, her having those braces at that lunch with Marcus Houston and him popping up on a candle, so I said, I don't know if she was telling him that she wasn't posting it or she was just doing it because she was a teenager. At this point in time, we weren't supposed to know that they knew each other. We weren't supposed to know that. But her being thirsty and being a kid, she was, you know. So with him saying like, oh, she didn't want to post or uh, she said I wasn't famous anymore and all of that. Then why was she posting it? Why is she on a lunch getting close to you? All that stuff? She wanted people to know that y'all are dating. Like she wanted people to know that this is my man. Like I go with Marcus Houston. She wanted that. She absolutely did. Mm -hmm. She was very flirtatious um, at the dinner or the brunch. And the thing, uh, another thing is too, Chris Stokes was there. 
Chris Stokes was there. Like, <laughs> he was at that brunch. He's sitting on the other side. He was there. Him and Marcus go everywhere together. They do everything together. Still to this day. So, uh, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. And then they blame it on Chrissy. I'm like, oh, Chrissy introduced us. And why is Chrissy introducing you to 17 year old girls? Like, gross. It's still weird. I mean, you are too old for that. You are too old for that. You absolutely are. So, but she knew exactly who Marcus was because she had already known him years. She had, that's why they got married so quick because they had already. If you basically been kicking it with somebody, dating them secretively since you was like 14, 15 years old. I mean, what are we waiting for? Type of situation. Like, we know this is what we want to do. I mean, we've been together for how long now? We've been together years. To the public, we just met, but we haven't. We've been getting, you know, we've been knowing each other for quite some time. And again, proof and pudding. Proof and pudding. They're giving, we're dating. This isn't, I was my buddy. I was my bro. This isn't giving that. This is giving, this is my man. <laughs> Look at me, my man. We cute. Um, is what it's giving. Is This is my boyfriend. And he was giving, this is my girlfriend. So, yeah. Uh, and she has on braces. <sighs> well, you met her, she did not have braces on her mouth. No, she did not. No, because again, they got engaged at 18. She was 18 when they got engaged and she had no braces on her mouth. They were not there. Mark, you tried it. You're popped. You absolutely are. So, um, yeah, it's the lies for me. Cut it out. Like, you're caught. Just get over it. Um, And he also needs to, hold on, let's, cause let's get into this. Let's get into this. Hold on, move. Let's get into this. No one is lying on you. Y'all hit the like, hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. Hit the like. Ooh, these old survivors are so annoying. So um, now shout out to Quentin Tarver. Rest in peace. He passed away a year or so ago um, in a car accident in um, Texas. So rest in peace to him and shout out to his family. We love you, Quindon. Amazing guy. Um, gone definitely too soon. But he was extremely talented. Um, back in the day, he sang in the Romeo and Juliet movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. I uh, let, Let's get into this talented young boy. Chris Stokes signed him um, at this time. And at this time, right here, we're looking at a boy abused, okay? He was going through things with Chris Stokes and Marcus Houston at this time. So this is you look at a person and you can never know what a person's going through because this boy was going through all type of stuff. So let's get into it. Oh, yeah. Someday a spirit will take you and guide you there. I know. I didn't know how to accept that. I didn't know how to understand that because I felt like I didn't deserve it. Um, I had went through something tremendous, something that kind of took my life from me, took my energy from me, and that was to experience a rape as a child. But I've been waiting to be there for you. And I'll be there just helping you out whenever I can. In 1996, I was signed to Virgin Records. Um, it was a pretty amazing thing for me because all my life I wanted to see. And um, I got the opportunity to start my music journey professionally. When um, I signed a Virgin and I recorded my debut album, Quindon, um, at that time, everything was like a dream that had came true for me. 
but um, unexpectedly, it kind of went for the worst for me. I quit the cast of surprise for me. Everybody be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. Quindon. Quindon has a surprise. Oh, oh. Oh. I just want to say to you that I love you. Say Marcus, you remember him? The most talented singer Chris Stokes ever signed. Y'all remember him? Because we do. Yeah, we do. This boy's life was hell because of y'all. Mm -hmm. He didn't deserve nothing that happened to him. And you know what happened to him. You know that boy was telling the truth. And so he left this world. He stuck to his story because it happened. It was his experience and he was extremely talented and how y'all blackballed him and made it so that he couldn't go into certain rooms and that y'all made sure that certain people did not deal with him and were not more so of Chris, but you helped as well. Just like you did with Raz B and the other group members of B2K. Y'all did the same thing. Y'all blackballed them and y'all ripped Omarion out of that group because you knew that they couldn't, that group wouldn't survive without him. Y'all knew it wouldn't. Y'all did that on purpose. Y'all ripped Omarion out of that group because he was the only one that y'all felt y'all could feed off of. Everybody else was disposable after y'all did what y'all did to them. If we have the lead singer and we convince him to not go around with this energy, then we don't, who cares what the, the rejects say? Who cares what Raz or Bug or Fizz? Who care what they say? You know, we got Omarion. We got what we need. So it was the same thing with Marcus. They had what they needed. They had Marcus. So he, Chris didn't care about the other members. He, he didn't care. He had a star. And it was the same thing with Quindon. Quindon was a star. But since Quindon said something, and not right away, not right away, after they used this boy up. So this is just a talented boy that wanted to be in the industry. That's it. He, lo, only God could have foreseen what was about to happen to him. Yeah, but Marcus, you very so much new because you went through it yourself. So with Raz B, because he was the then Raz B, Quindon. And then after they got rid of Quindon, when the you know years passed, they brought up another group, and that group was B2K. And then look at you know Raz B coming out stating the same thing Quindon was saying. Like this is not a coincidence. Like it's not. To hear Quindon and Raz have certain conversations, to hear Raz, hold on, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, to hear Raz be on the phone with Marcus Houston, let's get into that. Marcus, let's get into your tea. Where is that? Do I, do I hear that? Well, I do. Hold on. Let's get into that conversation. This is Quindon Tarver, God rest his soul, and Raz B having a conversation on what Marcus Houston allegedly did to the both of these men. Let's get into it. Quindon said he was on the bed. Chris Stokes is in the room. Chris Stokes told Marcus Houston to penetrate him. Marcus Houston did so. 
And Quentin told Marcus, and remember, Quentin is a child, that same beautiful little boy that we just heard singing. This is all happening to him at this time, right? And Mar Marcus was told to penetrate Quentin, and he did. And Quentin told Marcus that he was bleeding. I will rewind that so y'all can hear it again with y'all own ears. Mm -hmm. Marcus was on the bed. Marcus was right there next to me. When he tried to penetrate me, and then I told him I was bleeding. I said, it hurt. Wow, what the fuck? It hurt, dude. It hurt. It hurt me. I'm a kid. So he was like telling me that it's okay. I was like, okay, it's okay. He put a dick in my booty hole, bro. He was a little boy. This is not an adult saying, and an, another adult didn't know. He was a kid, literally. This little preteen little boy, you know, is what he was. And this is what happened to him. It's, this is vivid in his mind. It's a trauma. You know, he, you, you, he don't, you don't get to force him to forget that because it ruins your image. So what? You shouldn't have did it. And he said this until he passed away. Until his dying day, this was his story. And he's been interviewed multiple times by multiple people. Quinden and I were talking before he passed away and I saw the DMs to prove it. I just didn't want to, him to feel like I was trying to use him in any way. So that's why I never really asked for an interview because I just really felt his pain. You know, and it's just like, you know, that I'm so sorry, you know, that that happened to you. And you need to know that people care, you know? So it was something that made him have just the hardest time, even growing up like with sexuality, you know, and stuff like that, because it's just like, well, I'm not that, but still at the same time, this was happening to me. So, you know, so there's just so much confusion with Quinden, like he didn't know whether to date girls or boys or like he didn't know what to do he that's why it's traumatic because it offsets you we normally are born to choose what we want rather you're gay straight whatever you know it's just you feel how you feel and however you feel is what you attract and what you you know seek but he was not given that option it was taken from him and what had happening so young it's the age of discovering. So if this was never his decision to do, this would not have been an experience that he had. You know? So this experience is being forced upon him. So then after that, while you are being abused, you know, and whatnot, you, your body kind of builds a tolerance for it, you know, to where you kind of brace yourself and, you know, and then even I don't know, some people escape. Some they, it's all type of stuff, you know, that people go through. So again, and then being intimate always, especially if you have unresolved issues with your trauma, it always affects you in, in, with your intimacy in any way, shape, or form. Rather you don't like people close to you, you're not a cuddler, you're you're none of that stuff. You know, just because the things that happen to so you have a distrust, you know, with people. So you are not one to. You know, even with your own kids, you know, you can have a disconnect, um, you know, with that. You know, you have a lot of parents out here that don't tell their kids that they love them, you know, and stuff like that. Um, and it can that can stem from that, too. You know, not feeling loved or protected to where you even have problems with that, you know, just because of somebody violating you. And that's what happened to Quinden. He was violated. That's what happened to Raz. He was violated. You know, they, they didn't get to choose this. It just happened. You know, so, and it's unfortunate. So shout out again to Quentin Tarver. Rest in peace. We love you. We love you. We love you. Shout out to the Tarver family. Um, we love you as well. But, you know, let's keep listening. We Chris laying on the bed, watching with the big-ass polo, teddy bear, and the big-ass pillows on the bed. Fucking me. And watching. That shit not cool, bro. Are you talking about the same room with the burgundy stuff in there? What? 
was the, at the time we was in the room was did that was the couch like red burgundy like the burgundy with right that's why we call him the burlester and with rasby's talking about um are you talking about the burgundy you know because um quindon said that there was a big teddy bear you know in the room and the you know i keep a receipt this is the room he's talking about this is the room that Quindon is referring to. This picture is of the group immature, all underage, in the bed with underwear on. This photograph was taken by Chris Stokes. Yes. No, I keep a receipt. So it's like, yeah, don't play. This is the, that is the room that Quindon is referring to. Girl, I don't have to lie on nobody. I don't have to lie on nobody. This is the room, the same room with these teenage boys in this bed in underwear. What is the reason? What do they need to be in this bed like this for as teenagers? These ain't grown men in this bed. These boys been working together since they were young. So the burgundy, the pillow, all of that that they're explaining. This is the room. Chris, I keep a receipt. The internet is forever, but let's keep listening. Any couch? Was it burgundy? No, it was blue. Chris's room. I was laying outside the bedroom. I was in Chris's bedroom. He had big guys, polo pillow. Are you talking about the Chris had? Are you talking about that wooden bed Chris had? That real high wooden bed? Yes, 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 nigga. Yeah, I know about that bed. Hey, on the side of that bed, on the left of it, was that little? Was it that little glass jar with the change in it and the little like futon? Was there a little? Fu- Huh? How do you know about that? I said, how do you know about that? You were younger than me, so how do you know about that? Quentin, I'm trying to tell you, I walked through the same thing that you walked through. That first time that Marcus ever put his dick in my booty was in that it was in that room too. So Marcus fucked you too? Yeah. That happened. That happened like I believe that happened like twice. Like once there, and then like one time, like like in Vegas, it was like me, Marcus, and, and Chris, and like that shit. When I told Taz, when I told Taz about the shit, she didn't believe me. When I told her, I said he has uh, Marcus has a black girlfriend. She said, "Oh, she loved You talking? You talking about? You talking about? You talking about Chris's dick? They sitting here verifying everything. Like when you when you're sick and tired of something, and you tired of people lying to your face, telling you that you're a liar, you get very graphic. Like, look, whatever we gotta do to, cause he no, he did this to a lot of people. Like, we need no, let's get him. Not do you know this? Because this one, okay. What about this? They they literally sit here comparing traumas, like trauma bonding. You know, like right in front of us is what this is giving. Trauma bonding. Mm-hmm. You talking about Marcus or Chris's dick? I'm talking about Marcus's dick. Yeah. He's a black mole on his nut. Yeah, he's, and he's not circumcised. He's and he's not circumcised either. Marcus is not circumcised, no. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He's not. And he asked me to suck his dick. I told him no. Not a coincidence, Chris. I keep a receipt. Why is B2K in this room in underwear, burlesque and burgundy underwear on a burgundy wooden bed? Chris! 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 Y'all ain't gonna, y'all gonna lie to a lot of people, but playing with me, y'all are not going to. Like, y'all is not gonna play with me. 
Why? Why are they in a room just like they were in the 90s? Mm. 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 Y'all see the color of that bed? That bed post on us at Burgundy? You see that? You see that girl? Oh, you see that girl? Mm -hmm. Look look now. Look at the look at B2K. Look at B2K. Mm. Oof. Girl, this happened time after time after time after time. B2K is where it ended because of RAS. This is where it stopped because of RAS. Mm -hmm. If he would have come out with information like this, it would have kept going. It would absolutely would have. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm sorry. Man. Yeah, Chris did the same shit. With, see, Chris would try to work through the kids and work through Marcus because he already got Marcus at a young age. And he would work through Marcus to, 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 to see if. Should have said, man, you said, you know what? When I, this this is the type of stuff that makes me upset. That's nasty. I didn't know what was going on. That motherfucker was just not fucking or something. But they was in the bathroom. I'm in on the tour bus. Oh my God. So what Quentin is explaining when he was on tour, he said that Marcus and Chris would be in the shower for long time periods of time together. So he was like, I don't know what's going on with you. Like, here sounds like, I don't know if they was, you know, but if this was going on with me, I can only assume, you know, that this is what's going on between Marcus and Chris inside the shower. Because why aren't they in the shower together? And then not only is they together, it's for a long time. Um, He was in there. So, and then I, let me, I got another receipt. Hold on. Let me show you. Because y'all hear, he, he said that Marcus and Chris, I'm going to rewind so y'all can hear that again. Y'all, let me go find this. Hold on. My, this other receipt here. Yes, let me go find this other receipt here. And should have said, man, you said, you know what? When I this this is the type of stuff that makes me upset. That's nasty. I didn't know what was going on. That motherfucker was just not fucking or something. But they was in the bathroom. I'm in on the tour bus. Oh my god, the far back. You know the. Back in the tour bus, the, uh, main room. Yeah, I mean, the main, the yep. Main room. Uh, every everything that you talking about, Quinn. I used to walk through the same shit. Chris used to have me have sex. I used to have to fuck Chris all the time. To where it, it was like, man, this shit's like it's not even. This shit is nasty, my nigga. I'm like, I'm really looking at this nigga like this nigga really is gay. Like this nigga really do like this shit, and I have to participate and do this shit. When can I stop? This, that's what he's what you call an incest perpetrator, dog. Someone that's close, someone that's close to you, that's like a father figure that will just fucking straight mislead you and take advantage of you. Got platinum plaques and tell you you're not gonna do this if you're not gonna do this. You can't be here if you don't do this. And well, this this certain level, and you know, and you know, I don't know where the fuck my mind was. You know what I mean? It's a straight mind fuck control, real talk. It was a straight manipulation. They tried to manipulate me. They tried to give me my watch. It didn't work. Nah, I got out too. It didn't work for me either. I mean. Let me guess, they threw your shit out somewhere. Yeah, they did. They did it. That's it. They threw my, guess what? Off the wall. It was on uh, Cahunga Boulevard. Cahunga? Cahunga? Cahunga or Tahunga Boulevard, the old office, the old Get Hook yeah. office. My nigga, yeah. Tahunga Ventura. You talking about uh you talking Irish? About, you talking about uh the, the, the dark skinned girl? Oh one second. So when he stated that Marcus Houston and uh, 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 Chris Stokes was in the bathroom all the time, this picture right here got leaked. Mm-hmm. A Marcus Houston on the toilet. That picture was sent to Chris Stokes. Yeah. This is how we got this photo. So you see this picture on the side with Marcus Houston having glasses on? 
and why not? Okay. Okay. Yes. He was sending it to Chris Stokes. Absolutely. Because he sent it to him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Whew. So I'm going to say they've been in the bathroom together. Other... Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm one to believe it because I'm like, okay, well, he did get caught sending him that um, selfie of him in the bathroom on literally on the toilet. Like gross. Um, but yeah, so that's on the toilet shot, girl. Why? Full come? I don't know. Um, but he was sending it to Chris. That's what that work. That's what that work. That's what that work, girl. So, um, but yeah, let's get back into this recording. Hold on. Are you talking? Are you talking about? Are you talking about? Are you talking about Chris? Mia, go on that and lift up Marcus. Mia, how would he know that? Go on there. You don't want to go in there and tell him to cough. You don't want to go in there and lift up the. Because I know I would. All right, come here. Let me see something. Let, let, let me make you feel good real quick. And I'll be over there investigating the whole time. Like, wait a minute, because he said that you got, because that's what it says. So, what that were? What that were? Because all oh, you, oh, you best believe I would have been over there looking. Sure would have. No, you try. Like okay, let let let's see. Cause how he know that? How he know that? How he know that? Gross. So um, yeah. But let's keep listening. This is Dick. You talking about Marcus or Chris's dick? I'm talking about Marcus's dick. Yeah. He's a black mole on his nut. Yeah, he's and he's not circumcised, and he's not circumcised either. Hi, Devontae, love you. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. He's not. And he asked me to suck his dick. I told him no. I'm gonna do that shit, but he wanted me to. Why, Chris Lake? Why? Man, I'm sorry. Chris being just me and Marcus being in the shower. Everything. It was so crazy, yeah, Chris did the same shit. With, see, Chris would try to work through the kids and work through Marcus because he already got Marcus at a young age. And he would work through Marcus to, 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 to see it. Man, you sick. Man, you sick. You know what? When I, this is the type of stuff that makes me upset. That's nasty. I didn't know what was going on. Them motherfuckers were fucking or something. But they was in the bathroom. I'm in on the tour bus. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, main, yep. Uh, uh, every everything that you talking about, Quinn. I used to walk through the same shit. Chris used to have me have sex. I used to have to fuck Chris all the time, to where it, it was like, man, this shit's like it's not even. This shit is nasty, my nigga. I'm like, I'm really looking at this nigga like this nigga really is gay. Like this nigga really do like this shit, and I have to participate and do this shit. When can I stop? That's what he's what you call an incest perpetrator, dog. Someone that's close, someone that's close to you, that's like a father figure that will just fucking straight mislead you and take advantage of you. Got platinum plaques and tell you you're not gonna do this if you're not gonna do this. You can't be here if you don't do this. And well, this is certain level, and you know, and so again, these were kids, and him telling them that hey, if you don't do these things, do what I need to, then you gonna go back to nothing, nothingness. These are a lot of boys that are coming up in poverty, you know, not having the, you know, okay lives, you know, not like born with silver spoons in their mouth, you know, and stuff like, like, no, they, they come from, you know, a certain background. So you're going to be a little bit hungrier. And again, it's easier to manipulate children and, you know, teenagers and, you know, so it's easier, you know, to do that. It's harder to manipulate an adult. That's why they don't do these things to adults because they, they won't allow them to. But a kid is, you know, somebody that's excited and happy, you know, it's like a, taking a kid inside of a candy store. 
They just see so many things that they want, that they want to do. And then imagine telling them no. So as a parent, if you can't afford to take your kids to Disneyland, why even take them to the parking lot? We're not going to go into Disneyland, but I'm just going to drive you guys up to it so you can see what it looks like. We're going to walk all the way up and just stop at the doors and just look around. And it's like, no, or we can just not waste gas and come here at all until you can afford to go. Taking a kid in the candy store broke. Like, why? I mean, unless you're planning on stealing. But if you ain't no thief and you ain't got no money, why take this kid to like, that's, that's wrong. Because yeah, you know that they're just going to, and they'll do anything for it. So if you tell them like, hey, now, nah, you can go and get you a cup of Jawbreakers and Laffy Taffy's and Chico Sticks, but when dot, 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 you know, they're just going to do it. You know, they're not even going to think much about it. You know, they, oh, well, you just told me I can get whatever I want. <laughs> so, you know, and instead of with these boys that being candy, it's girls, cars, money, homes, you know, it's all of that. So th this is a different type of candy. You know, and let's not forget that they were all, you know, let, allegedly doing certain substances. They were all drinking, you know, already and, you know, and stuff like that. They were doing a lot of things at a young age, you know, that they shouldn't have been doing because it's easier to manipulate them into making decisions like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's easier to manipulate them to do things like this drunk. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So uh yeah, I, I feel that he definitely um took advantage of all of them. Um, and I think that it well, obviously within the black community, with most men, they don't say anything because of how they are looked at afterwards. It doesn't have anything to do with, and I think that that's another thing that needs to be spoke on. Because if you know something bad happened to you and you know it wasn't right. You coming, not coming forward because of how you are going to be judged after says a lot about how society treats men when they do come forward. You know, instantly they're gay, instantly they're this, instantly they're that. They're a bunch of things that they don't even understand themselves. So it's easy for them to listen to what y'all are saying and beat themselves up on the inside for because they've already been doing it. You're just adding insult to injury um, within that moment um, in time. It's not helpful. Um, when these men see how stones are being cast at them um, for coming forward, why would they want to say anything? It's just, they just be like, oh, well, I mean, I guess whatever. You know, they would rather deal with, keep suppressing it, you know, versus to dealing with it just because of how they're treated afterwards. It has nothing to do with what happened to them. They're not afraid of that. It's like most of them have even come to terms with it. It's the treatment that's going to happen if I say something, how I'm going to be viewed. You know, people are not only whether they think I'm a liar, they're gonna think I'm gay, and they're gonna think I'm this and I'm that. My girl ain't gonna want me no more. My, you know, it. My family gonna be fine. I mean, like, it, they gonna think that I take it up the booty, or they gonna think that I suck. And you know, so it, instead of worried about me and my health and my well being, that that's not going to be worried about. What's going to be worried about is me being ridiculed and people are whispering, you know, behind my back, you know, and things like that. So they would rather just not deal with it. Because some people take information as information and some take information and they weaponize it. They take it and turn it into a weapon. So if you confide in your woman and you tell your woman that certain things have happened to you because certain men have violated you and y'all break up and then she using it as a dagger, like, oh, because he gay because he was when he was young, da 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 oh, did it. That's not okay. Like, I mean, it really is not. And you're affecting them on a whole nother level. You know, on a whole nother level than what you could, because they, they're believing a lot that you're saying, because you, you're your own worst enemy, you know? So, yeah, they beating themselves up on the inside about it already. And then somebody that they trust using that information and using it as a weapon, because men do it too. Absolutely. When women confide in them and tell them certain things that happen to them and whatnot, uh, these men drugging them up and taking advantage of them turns into they're a slut. And they, they slept with a whole party of men and, the, you know, like a Jessica Reed or something to where they're taking and weaponize it, you know, against her, you know, instead of just giving the girl sympathy and empathy and being there for her. Um, instead, no, let's weaponize it. Let's turn it into something that makes you look bad, you know, that you let all these dudes do dot, dot, dot to you, you know, and all of that. 
and you let him, you liked it, knowing that it was a horrifying experience for them and that it is still very traumatic and affects them in their day to day. And they confided in you and look what you did. So, but it's worse with men. It definitely is because men sometimes it's, it's with the over masculinity, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. So that's why most men will take it to their grave. You know, they, they literally will um, over being ridiculed or criticized um, for it or just being spoke of at all. They just, mm -mm, I'm going to take this to my grave. Then y'all. So shout out to Quentin Tarver because he did not take it to his grave. He left that here on earth. And that's why I felt our job to make sure, you know, anyway, we can raise awareness and justice for him. We do that. Um, shout out to Jay Baby. She says, where's LDB and Romeo? Has anyone heard to speak out on this? Um, LDB has been ultra silent um, about anything regarding this. Now, LDB was at Marcus Houston's wedding. Um, I think Romeo was there. I think he was there too. Um, Romeo blocked me. <laughs> Romeo cock out ass block me. And yeah, so him. Because no girl, no J baby girl. He blocked me, girl. Uh, because I just asked him if he was a part of this. Uh, the, the no. Girl, I said, why is y'all still, why, why folk come as you still working with Crystal? J Boog too. So yeah, because Jarrell, I don't care, Jarrell. Uh, Jarrell, J Boog. Nah. So yeah, me and Jay Boo got into an OL. He he came into the comments. I said what I said. And then he said what he said. And then I cussed him the out. I sure did. No, because he gonna try to make it seem like I was putting a trauma on him. I'm not putting no trauma on you. Raz B said that the man made him suck your and I'm inclined to believe Raz B for the simple fact and that y'all was inside the rooms and stuff with in y'all underwear and all, all this gay stuff. I'm just so happy to grow. Right. Girl, Jarrell better go sit down somewhere, girl. Um, girl, girl, girl Javon said, girl, he blocked me, girl. Oh, my God. He blocked me. Yes. Because I, I knew he had something to do with this. I said, why is y'all still working with him? And Raz B said that about j -Bug. And the allegedly, you know, giving. You know, I didn't say that. I wasn't there. I was. I'm asking. It's a question because it's been said, not something I'm making up. So that's why I'm saying, uh, uh, no, 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 no. My girl here flip. Girl here flip. I said no. You got your nerve. You got your nerve. And I am a comical person for the people in the chat. Y'all can shut the up. These type of topics are serious, but they can be very boring to discuss. It's my job to keep it alive. Absolutely. That's why we're sitting here. We've been sitting here with over 1K in the chat. Like, it's my job to keep it entertaining while raising awareness. I know what the I'm doing. That's why I've raised so much awareness for it. But I'm not going to be boring while doing it. I'm going to entertain while getting my point across. Nobody laughing at anybody's abuse, trauma, nothing. There's no laughter after that. That's where you worry about laughter. My girl, please. Like y'all weird. I'm going to entertain my people because not everybody's interested in this topic and it's very triggering. It very so much is. A lot of people have been through this. So it is very triggering. So it's nice to have some medicine, which is laughter. It's the best medicine. To be in a horrible mood or to feel triggered and then somebody make you laugh within that moment, it feels good. It absolutely does. But we're not laughing at anybody's trauma or any of that. If you want somebody to, to sit here and boringly talk about this ish, it's plenty of other content creators that sit there and Bueller, Bueller, Bueller with a straight boring ass face that ain't nobody watching. Girl, so if you want to go be bored, go elsewhere. Because I'm still getting my point across, sweetie. I promise you. Like, uh, girl, I'm still getting my point across. There's so much. Raising awareness. When it's time to be serious, we are. But other than that, we won't have a good goddamn time. Okay? As a victim myself, I would have loved if somebody would entertain me like this. 
while I talk about something that I believe in at the same time. I get to be entertained and raise awareness for something that I truly feel strongly about. Sign me up. We're not laughing at people. We're not even laughing with them. Girl. So um, anyways, so if y'all want to go talk about it somewhere boring, it's plenty of people that talk about this boring as hell. Like literally just sit there and Marcus did this. And y'all, yeah, we're we not like that. We animated, we all of that. And we're going to stay that. That's why we're popping to. Girl, it's going to be plenty of people that talk about this, but they ain't going to be sitting at a 1K this whole time. Like, we've been sitting at a healthy 1K. And this is a hard topic. This is hard to get people to pay attention to. It's hard. It's not easy. And we've been covering this story, and we're going to continue. Like, we, we, we don't just give up. The other people talking about it because it's viral, because it's on blogs and stuff. Sort of, we've been talking about it. So it's like, you know, girl, like we've been talking about it. So if anybody's genuine about this topic, it's me. That's how Raz B reached out to me in the first place. He watched all of my videos. And he appreciated the fact that he got to laugh instead of just sitting there being devastated the whole time. This is why people don't feel comfortable enough talking about it as of now. Because nobody makes them feel comfortable enough to, so, to do so. I feel like I do. I have had people in the chat that will pour out their heart and what have happened to them. And I'm going to keep it this way because again, it's a hard topic. Very hard. It's not an easy thing to get people to click on. It's not. It isn't, especially holding their attention. It's hard. Try it. Try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> Girl, try it. <laughs> Let's see how far you get. If you want serious, 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 go watch my survivings. And I still even keep those entertaining. Go watch my survivings. But over here, we're going to keep raising awareness. We absolutely are. Until he's behind bars, because he should be. What he did was wrong. And this is proof of it. Right in front of us. This man. These men. One now deceased. Like, that That matters. I would never laugh at that. Any laughter? You see how, when we're serious, we will be. That That's when it's time. But again, hard topic. Hard. Very hard topic. Um, very, very so much. So, oh, ooh, it's my boo talking about boo. Like, ah, yeah. Since day one, I'm gonna love you. Uh, thank you for talking about Quentin. Um, he will really love that nobody has given up on him. Absolutely. Shout out to Since Day One. She did an amazing interview uh with Quentin back in the day. It's really what like like saw me with her. Um, is she did an amazing interview, it was so good. Like, oh my god, I love her. So, um, yes, and she knew Quentin personally, literally met him, interviewed him, all that good stuff. So thank you, since they went for the hard work that you put in too, because again, it's no easy topic. Um, shout out to the happy girl. She says uh, Stewart has been speaking on this forever. The sister was stripped too. Absolutely. We have been talking about this for a very long time, and we're not going to stop. That's why I'd be so happy when people send me this type of stuff because they know we have been following it. They like, no, this it has to mean something to Sean because if it doesn't, why hasn't he like abandoned it? I won't abandon it for what? It's like I'm not gonna abandon uh, abandon Shanquella, you know, or anybody else. Like I'm not anybody any story we follow that has an ongoing, we're gonna follow it. I don't give a damn. Oof. I'm a, if I have to follow for the next 10 years, I'm going to follow, follow it until somebody puts some handcuffs on Marcus and Chris. Because both of them deserve to go to jail for what they did. Quinden did not deserve that. They literally ruined his life. They ruined Rasby's life. All victims are not the same. Some victims can be hurt and function after that. Some can't. Some cannot. Some cannot. Some are different. Some swallow it differently. It's, we all different. So what happened to me, I kept pushing through. Not everybody does that. Not everybody made it. Some people hurt themselves, you know, and whatnot along the way. These people's lives were ruined by these men. For nothing. Rasby did nothing to deserve what his own family member did to him. Quinden did nothing to deserve what Marcus and Chris did to him. What did they do besides have talent and want to perform and show the world what they have to offer? That's all they wanted. So you mean to tell me in the process that they have to be R-worded and M-worded and all of that just to be seen? 
Are you kidding me? When you could have done all of that stuff with somebody, an, an adult, voluntarily, but instead you want to... Why? Like, you're sick. Like, what, what is wrong with you? So where you feel on any on any planet, on, in any realm, anywhere, that that is okay, it's not. And that's why we still discuss it. I don't have a vendetta against Marcus Houston. I don't know him. I don't have a vendetta against Chris Stokes. I don't know you. But I can sympathize with a man that has been hurt by another man, that has been violated by another man or men. I can verify. I can vouch. I know what that's like. May not be the same experience. But the pain hurts all the same. So I know where they're coming from. I feel it. I see me in them. And I'm sure they see me in them. Like, yet, yeah, no. Nobody giving up on these men. For what? For Give up on them for what? Giving up on them helps Chris win. Someone who shouldn't be. Same thing with Marcus. I don't give a damn that Marcus started a family. So? He should have thought about that before he was destroying other families. But he gets to get a happy ending for what? For what? Because he's going to get his hell somewhere. Whether it's here or whether it's in the next one. Oh, but he's going to get it. You don't get to just get away with that type of stuff. You're going to pay for it somewhere. So he may have to have his heaven here. And that's what I tell Raz. Don't look at what they have. Don't look at their possessions because they're earthly. They can't take it with them. Prince has the beautiful Paisley Park. He ain't take that with him. Wherever he went. Elvis had Graceland. He ain't take that with him. Michael had Neverland. He ain't take that with him. So don't worry about these possessions. Because your heaven is eternal. So focus on that. Because they're going to have to get their heaven here. Because they're not getting it anywhere else. I promise. Not with what they've done. Yeah. They say the most evil people get away with the, the most heinous things and live the longest. They have to. Because they don't get none after And then it lights out after this. So if an evil, rotten person, they, ooh, they 90 years old and still just evil. Where they going after this, girl? <laughs> they better collect as many years as they can here. Because the, the, the earth is not of God. This is Satan's. That's why he was sent here. That's why he didn't get to stay up there. No, you, you don't get the same thing we get. Uh-uh. No. Mm -mm. That's why he was cast here. This ain't no heaven. That's why people try to find their heaven because they're so evil. So that they have to have it here. Because they ain't getting nowhere else. Making those type of decisions. So it's just like, yeah. But yeah, we will fight. Continue to fight for them. I absolutely will. I don't believe that Rasby is crazy. I don't believe that Quindon was crazy. Quindon was a very laid back individual. Still performed. You know, was an amazing singer. Very talented man. He wasn't out here hurting people. and all, like He wasn't doing none of that. Just living copacetically. Still had a dream to be a great singer. That's about it. Um, you know, but Rasby's life has been a, very tumultuous. And again, it doesn't mean, oh, he's like that because he's crazy. No, he's like that because he's been through a lot. Been through a lot. We haven't went through what they went through. Being famous that young and having it. And then the next minute, you know, it's like you close your eyes and you open your eyes and it still feel like they're closed. Because it's like what you saw before is nothing. Of It's like they, they go to sleep and are afraid to open their eyes because the, the reality has been ripped from them after being violated. So this man, Chris, keeps violating Raz and violating Raz and violating Raz and telling him that, you know, I'm going to give you this and that you're going to have this in life and this, you're going to be set up forever and, you know, and all of this stuff. And he's young, vulnerable, gullible, naive, you know, so he tends to believe those things. So he let Chris do what he wanted him to do. Go ahead. Rather it was with his body, his mind, his soul, whatever. He gave it to him. Like, just here. I'm, you own me, you know, type of situation. And for all of that to be ripped away. So it's like, I did all of that for nothing. I did all of that just for you to take everything from me and then try to make me look crazy 
Like afterwards, you want me to look psycho? What? It's enough to drive a person crazy. Like it really is. It's enough to drive a person crazy. Like that's insane. So yeah, but let's keep listening. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what the fuck my mind was. You know what I mean? It's a straight mind fuck control. Real talk. It was a straight manipulation. Nah, I got out too. It didn't work for me either, homie. Since it didn't work for me, they got me out the fucking count. My nigga, they threw my. I, I remember going to. Uh, I think it was. Uh, L- let me. Yeah, thirteen. Raz B said since he was thirteen, um, this had been happening to him at th- at the age of thirteen years old. Mm-hmm. You guess they threw your shit out somewhere. They threw my, guess what? Kawanga, Kawanga, Kawanga or Tahunga Boulevard, the old office, the old get hooked off. Shout out to Javanta. She says, love you. Been following you for years because of your topics of, of justice. Love you. I love you too. Truly uncheckables. Raz is amazing. Bringing awareness to SA. Yes. Such a taboo subject for black men. It very so much is. And this is a problem. Is that I, I want men to feel comfortable talking about it, even if it's just the one person, um, just getting it out because it can that can just help so much. Just letting one person know, even if it's a stranger, um, you know, even calling like a hotline, you know, um, or something like that is to let it out because a lot of these men are going around here. Like a lot of domestic violence, I think that happens is a lot of abused men, a lot of men that have been through a lot of traumas. Because a lot of men cannot explain why they are, you know, abusive. And then you'll go into that background and you'll hear, you know, they'll finally like open up and like, well, you know what, this happened to me, you know, and that happened to me. So it's like, it's this anger that you're harboring and you're mad at so many different people that you're taking it out on different people. A lot of men that hate women hate their mother because they felt like their mother could have protected them or their mother could have did something because a lot of men are raised by single mothers. So they feel like their mother could have done something. So since their mom didn't do anything, they blame her. And they're not even doing it literally. They're doing it subconsciously, you know, to where they have no idea that they have all of this hatred towards someone that they really love, you know, like they they really love their mom, but at the same time, or dad, um, but it's just, you weren't there for me. Like you, you didn't protect me from these things that happened to me. So now I walk around with this anger and a lot of times where kids are messing up in school, you know, and stuff like that, or get into a lot of fights, you know, and stuff like that, it's like, talk to them. If you can't, if what they are doing is not obvious, like um, a divorce going on or somebody passed away, you know, or, or something like that. If it's not an obvious thing, then it's like, it's something that's under. So this could be the time to get them to open up about it. I mean, it's all of our worst fears as a parent, you know, to hear our child tell us that something, somebody violated them. And especially if that, because it's usually somebody, you know, so it, it's hard. They, they feel like they won't be believed. You know, that's why I feel like as a parent, I would say to my own kids, like I tell them all the time, I don't care who it is. Tell me, like, I promise I will protect you. It doesn't matter how many times that they said that they're going to hurt you or they're going to do this or they're going to do that. It does not matter because over my dead body, like I always tell them that don't ever feel afraid. Come tell me immediately so we can do something about it immediately, you know, because I can't be everywhere. You know, your mom can't be everywhere. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be a family member. Sometimes it could be a teacher, you know, if a a predator has no face, it could be anyone, you know, at any time. You know, it could be a neighbor. It could be a someone down the street. It could be you, you. Just never know. Like who sees you, who watches you. You you never know. It could be anyone. So if you ever get violated, it could be a friend. You know that you invite over to hang out, and it goes completely wrong. It goes completely left, and you think because I love that friend, you won't believe me. No, no, no. Come and tell me, and we will go from there. Like we absolutely will. And I think that that's important. You know, for kids to know because not everybody knows that it's okay to come and say something. Like, you got to let them know that it's okay. Otherwise, they're not going to say nothing. And they're just going to harbor it. And then it's all type of bad things that they'll get into and can't get into drugs, drinking, prison, you know, all type of stuff. Because there's these suppressed issues that they don't want to talk about. And they're angry, but they don't know why. And they don't know why it's because they're suppressing it. They're doing everything in their power not to think of it. They're doing everything in their power to block it out. 
but there's this anger that's on the inside. And just like people we love hurt us, we hurt people we love. We hurt the people we love the most. So when a lot of these kids are acting out, they're not doing it to hurt the family. They're not, they're hurt. You just don't know, you know, that they're hurt. And there's only one way to get to it. It's just by simply having a real conversation, but they have to feel comfortable enough to open up. That's why the more you say it, the more comfortable they'll feel because they know that they can. A lot of kids don't know that. They don't. And it should be a stranger telling them it should be the person they trust. Like I can tell your kid it's okay to open up. They don't know me. I can sit down with a man right now that's been violated and be like, open up to me. <laughs> it, he they don't if you don't know her, it's hard. Just like therapy and stuff like that. That's why I don't work for everybody. Because it's hard for people to open up to strangers. It's hard. You want to do it, talk, have these conversations with the people you love, you know, so that you can be, you know, get that validation that they actually care about you, they love you. And because if they knew, they would have never let it happen. Every victim needs to hear that. They need to hear that because then they it, it's like a reaffirming that it's not my fault. Because a lot of victims, we blame ourselves. If we weren't there, we didn't put ourselves in that situation, da, da, da. How was this Raspi's fault? What situation did he put himself in to where he could, should have been violated by Chris Stokes? How was this Quindon's fault, God rest his soul, that he should have been violated by Marcus Houston? Where, what blame do they take in that? They don't. But then when Rasby acts sporadically or does things that we may not necessarily understand, we blame him. No, this energy is coming from Chris because he's never gotten over what happened to him. So all of these decisions that he's making is because he came forward and he told the truth about something and he was bashed for it. People treated Rasby horribly. There were mock songs made about him, like Young Jock. No, Chris, no, Chris, no. But it was so, like, it was bad when he came out with his story. That's why I felt so bad for him. I'm like, this poor guy. He comes out and tells his story and people are making songs about him. Are you kidding me? You don't think that's enough to make a person... I mean, you imagine yourself as a victim. You heard, you turn on the radio and there's somebody making fun of you on a song for being a victim. Making it basically your fault. Making fun of like, and he literally in the lyrics was, no, Chris, no, Chris, no. Like somebody saying, no, don't R word me. How was that funny? The... But let, let's not consider none of that. You know, Raz B's just supposed to ignore that. No. It's hard to ignore. All because of what Marcus and Chris did to him. Y'all violated me. And not only do y'all get to live a good life afterwards, y'all making people make fun of me. Y'all got people out here, out here making me look real bad. Real bad. But then Marcus thinks that he gets to go sit on platforms and stuff like that and completely overlook what he did to Quindon and Raz. Yeah, I'll pass. Um, on Marcus Houston. I will never support anything that he done, sh does. Shout out to Sharon Jones um, for the super sticker. Thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you. Um, but it's just like, yeah, I mean, look at it from a perspective of how hurt Rasby was. Feeling like, okay, well, I'm being brave doing this. And people looking at it the complete opposite. Like, no, we're going to make songs about him. He gay, he this, he that. That's horrible. Horrible. And people wonder why men don't come forward. Um, let's get into, um, hold on. Let's get into this before we get out. Sorry, we're almost at our two hour mark. Um, so let's get into this because we will be back. <laughs> He's right. Um, where is it? Is it this one? I think it's this one. No, it's not that one. Sorry. Um, it's one another one with Raz B. I wanted to get into. Yeah, it's this one. Is Omari going on radio overseas and in New York saying I have bipolar and that I take pills? Answer that question because it only came from one place. Because right now I'm upset. I'm upset and I'm affected. And I've been affected and I've been affected since I was 13 years old, Marcus Houston. Because I came to live with y'all. So do me a hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it out and I'm gonna let you I'm gonna shut up. And I'm hold on, let me say what I gotta say. 
shut up. I, I didn't tell you to shut up. I said, let me humble myself. And, said, and then I said, I'm going to shut up so you can talk. I just want to get out. Why is Omari? Marcus, Marcus, you're not listening to me. I called you. I, I, nigga, I called you. I called you this morning, Marcus. Why is Omari? Why is Omari? I'm trying to talk to you, but you're yelling at me. You're yelling at me. Nigga, fuck you, bitch. Um, why was a Marcus pro uh, proclaiming his innocence? Why didn't Marcus answer the phone like, look, I'm not talking to you because of what you're going around lying on me. Like, why are you even answering Raj's phone calls at all? I, I, I didn't get that part. I didn't get the memo. You could tell how angry he is. And he said to you that he's been... <sighs> Since we arrest. Going on radio overseas and in New York saying I have bipolar and that I take pills. Answer that question because it only came from one place. Because right now I'm upset. I'm upset. And I'm affected. And I've been affected. And I've been affected since I was 13 years old, Marcus Houston. Since I was 13 years old, Marcus Houston. I would have been like, I don't know why you've been like, I didn't know. Like, you, you can hear in his throat, like, he is very so much serious about what he is saying. And you're not refuting any of it because that's how y'all do him private. And y'all always try to control the conversation. Y'all always try to make him feel like he's sick and he's crazy, you know, because y'all don't want y'all images ruined because y'all know what y'all did is image ruining. Because in our next live, we're going to get into Chris Stokes stating that he's not like that anymore. We're, and we're going to keep reiterating on these things because, again, you're guilty. These men did not lie on y'all. Like, they didn't lie on you. Mm -hmm. That's why y'all try to manipulate and control the conversations to gaslight Raz by offering him things to make him stop talking. Chris has always done that. Always. Chris will always send Raz some type of offer or business proposition to get him to shut up, to get him to be quiet, to get him to focus on something else so that he can stop focusing on what happened to him. Not that Raz is lying. It's just that we don't need you to focus on that. That's over with. Chris said out of his own mouth, I'm not like that anymore. Like what? Because it's been it was acknowledged on the phone what you did. So you're saying that you're not like that anymore and what was acknowledged. So you're admitting it. It's an omission, but I mean, at the same time, you're literally. You should always be on the opposite side. You should always be, no, you're lying. That's not true. That didn't happen. You're not like that. You're, you're more so of apologetic. You should be given apologetic to something you didn't do. I'm not being apologetic for something that I did not do. If somebody stole something from your house, I'm not apologizing. For what? I didn't do it. Now, if anything, I may give you a, an obvious apology. Like, oh, I'm sorry that happened to you. You know, like someone says, I'm sorry for your loss. You know, just, just like that. Just out of having manners. You know, like, oh, that's unfortunate. You know, but I'm not calling you like, oh, girl, I am so sorry that, no, because I didn't do it. So when I'm calling, not apologizing to Raz B for now, I'll say I'm sorry just because it's something that you say. I feel like to let the person know that you sympathize and that you are give you, 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 I can give you empathy, um, you know, within this moment of what you went through, but I'm not apologizing for Chris because I didn't do what Chris did to you. I'm not apologizing for Marcus Houston because I didn't do it. They would have to apologize. I mean, me apologizing for them does what? That still doesn't make them sorry. You can call them right now. And they'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. So, no, they, those men would have to speak for themselves. So, but um, all of these men, B2K, Immature, they are all doing apologies from Chris Stokes. And then Marcus needs to apologize to Raz. 
Quentin's family and whatnot, and there are here rumblings of other people that Marcus should be apologizing to as well. And then um because I'm gonna tell y'all like this, Marcus. What we're gonna talk about in our next live is the original uh immature group, right? One of the members left, and it's rumored that he left because Marcus, that was the first time you did what you did to the other people. Y'all wanna know what I'm talking about? Okay, because some of y'all probably are like what? Okay, so Quindon states that Marcus did things to him and Chris was present, right? Chris watched, okay? Same thing with Raz B, that Marcus did things to him and when he did things to him, Chris was present. They basically took turns with Raz, right? Now, yes, allegedly half pint, yes. Um, now, back in a dizzle, when y'all see Marcus in the bed nude, basically. The younger group of immature, they wore clothing like that too. You know, like underwear, you know, and stuff like that. So allegedly, from what I've been told, Marcus, and we're going to get into it, half pint, you did what you did to Quindon and Rass to half pint. That was the first time you allegedly did it. And half pint left the group. Allegedly. Um, after. So Half Pint allegedly is the first Quindon. And then we're from Quindon to Raz B. And that's what it makes like it really sad if that's true. Because Marcus Houston was a little boy. Like literally, like a little boy. That's why Marasnum say, like, oh, he got to Marcus first. He got to Marcus as a child. That's what they're referring to. Half pint. So hair flip. So on the next show, we're gonna be getting into that. That's what we're gonna be talking about next. So yeah. And as of now, I'm gonna be doing these survivings like this kind of like live. Um, and we will do, you know, uploads in between. But um, I want to keep this alive since Marcus wants to be out here trying to collect clout, you know, and whatnot, lying about his wife's age and, you know, and all of that stuff and allegedly doing all of these things, to all of these men um, and ruining their lives. Um, we're going to talk about it. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, we will go live in the morning with the hot topics. And then in the evening, we will be back with um, another update on Marcus Houston. We're going to talk and we're going to keep talking about it all week. And then we're going to talk about the, we're going to do a review of the Sunday interview that he do on TV. One. Yes. All of it. All of it. Justice for Quentin Tarver and for Raz B. And allegedly half pint. So we're going to get into that, y'all. We absolutely is. I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the super stickers and super chats and all that good stuff. I love you guys so much. Thank you for um, the content creators since day one and others um, that was here in the chat. I love you all. Uh, we will be back live tomorrow. Oh, my God. I love you guys. Until the next show. Bye. Fresh, 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 fresh.